A team consists of up to two driver operators, a human player, a coach, and a robot. Each match is played with four randomly selected teams, two per alliance. But each alliance is allowed one human player. Your opponent for one match may be your partner for another. Robots must be built from materials specified in the competition manual and fit within an 18-inch sizing cube. But after the match starts, robots may expand, but may never horizontally exceed a 20 by 42 inch rectangle. The primary scoring element is a plastic sample, one and a half square by three and a half long. There are 20 samples for the red alliance, 20 for the blue alliance, and 40 yellow alliance neutral samples. Another game element is the clip. Each alliance has access to 20 clips. Human players may attach clips onto samples to create specimens. The game is played on a 12-foot square playing field with a foam tile floor and one-foot high walls. A submersible structure is located in the center. Within the submersible are the barriers, low rungs, high rungs, low chambers and high chambers. In opposite corners are low and high baskets. Below the baskets are the taped off net zones. On the other corners are taped off observation zones. On both sides of the submersible are the ascent zones. Near the front and back walls are the taped off red, blue, and alliance neutral preset sample zones. April tags are located on the field walls to aid navigation. Blue and red alliance areas are on the left and right sides of the field. Before each match, 60 samples are randomly arranged in the submersible zone. 20 clips are positioned outside of each observation zone, and 12 samples are positioned on the preset sample zones. Teams place their robots on the field, touching the sidewalls. Each robot can start the match with either one specimen or one sample. The field and players are now ready. The match begins with a 30-second autonomous period. During auto, robots may attempt to score using pre-programmed instructions and sensor inputs. Following auto is the two-minute teleoperated period. Robots score using driver inputs. There are many ways to score during the auto and teleop periods. For example, scoring a sample into the net zone earns two points, and scoring a sample into the low basket earns four points or eight points for scoring into the high basket. Robots may bring alliance-specific samples to the observation zone. Human players can attach clips to the samples, turning them into specimens. Scoring a specimen on the low chamber earns 6 points, or 10 points if scored on the high chamber. Sample colors may be neutral or alliance-specific, but specimen colors must be alliance-specific. The last 30 seconds of the teleop period is the end game. Robots may continue scoring but have protected access to their ascent zones. Each robot contacting the low rung earns 3 points. If a robot achieves a low-level ascent, it earns 15 points. But a high-level ascent earns 30 points. When the match ends, a robot parked in the observation zone earns 3 points. There are many ways to score in Into the Deep, but there are also rules that if not followed will result in foul points being added to the opposing alliance's score. A robot cannot enter the observation zone if a human player is in that zone. Scoring elements may not be launched. During endgame, robots may not interfere with other robots in their alliance's ascent zone. This has been a summary of this season's game, Into the Deep, presented by RTX. For complete rules, please read the competition manual and check the Q&A forum. And always remember the most important rule of the first tech challenge, gracious professionalism. 
Good luck, teams, and have a spectacular season.